In this video, I'm doing a position analysis from the 54th Backgammon World Championship. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos, and I'll work on that. Thank you to Mark Olson, Bill Riles, Backgammon Galaxy, and Ace Point Backgammon for allowing me to use this position in this video. So this is a cube action decision in a match between Steve Sachs and Wilcox Snellings and two of the best players in the world in the main event, the round of 64. This is a 17 point match and Steve is leading a, with a score of four to one. So that's 13 away, 16 away. Steve owns a four cube and he's considering redoubling to eight. So Steve is playing the white checkers at the top and Wilcox the black checkers at the bottom. Wilcox has one checker on the bar and two other blots here. And white has a five point board, so a strong board and a lot of options to attack. He can hit with fives here, fives again, which are duplicated here uh, and twos over here. And if he wins a double gammon, he wins the match. So this is what we call a one-way gammonish position. White is going to win a lot more gammons than black. Now, if white redoubles to eight and wins a gammon, that'll be 16 points plus four. Um, he'll win the match, but he'll have 20 points. So that's three points extra overage. Now, uh, black is 16 away. So if black takes the eight cube and later turns it around, and redoubles to 16, he can win the match with perfect efficiency, getting exactly 16 points to get 17 perfectly to win the match. So these are important things to think about. So what are the roles uh, in the upcoming sequence that are really good for white? Well, anything that hits this checker is going to be big, assuming um, black does not come in with both. So any five, or even a 3-2 or a 6-5 will likely lose um, his market. Now, mark market losing sequence is a sequence of two rolls, one by white and next by black. But if white hits, uh, as long as black doesn't roll a double four, um, it's probably lo lost his market. So let's look. So this is what the plus-plus analysis showed at this score. It turns out to be a small no double, and a comfortable take. Um, so Steve thought about this for some time, uh, but Wilcox was thinking about it, thinking about the take decision while Steve was thinking about the doubling decision, and he took rather quickly. So let's look at the rolls. So these are the next rolls that White can roll um, that would partially lose his market. It's partial because it's only one roll, not two rolls. So again, all these fives, if he hits with a 6-5 or a 5-3 or a 6-2 or a double 5, 5-2, 5-4, or even 3-2, he's lost his market because his equity is going to be over one. Um, double four is an anti-joker, but that's only one number out of 36. Now, a lot of this has to do with the score. So we'll look at this. Again, this is at the score. And then when you look at it for money, this is a good way to always think about things. Think about it for money, then adjust for the score. So this is for money. It turns out it's too good to redouble for money. That's how strong it is. The reason why it's no double is because of the score. And what I said, you know, Steve will win the match with a double gamut with a perfect, with actually three points of overage. You see here, white wins 76% um, of the time and 51% of gamuts. Half the time he's going to win a gamut for the match. Um, so this is for um, money now. Uh, oh, wait a minute. This this is for money, and this is for the match. It turns out this is uh, at the score. This is a no redouble, for, but for money, it's too good to redouble. So what I like to do is look at score variance. Everyone has their own ways, and I'd love to hear about your ways of thinking about the score in the comments. Some people uh, learn the match equity table. Some people learn uh, Neil's numbers. They think about take points. They adjust for gammons, all sorts of numbers. The way I like to do it, I find it a little bit 
easier. Um, I learned this from reading Dirk Scheman's book, which is very uh, technical, but it's a good way. You, you want to be at a, even away scores. That's always good. For example, the 16, uh, 16 away is actually an important score because if you get an eight cube here and then you redouble, you win the match perfectly with 16 points. Um, if you're at a four away score, that's a good score to be at, but a five away score is not very valuable. As a matter of fact, there's not much of a difference between a five away score and a six away score in general. Um, because at six away, you'll need three games if, if they're doubled. And at five away, it would be the same thing. You just get one point of overage. Um, read that book and, and you'll learn. So I looked at different score variants. And that's here. So 13 away, 16 away was the score in the match. And it turns out to be a no double. Look what happens when you change the trailer score to 17 away. Now that 16 cube does not win the match and it becomes slightly too good to double. So it's really valuable to take at 16 away because you can win the match with perfect efficiency. At 15 away, it's not much difference, but it's a little bit different and it's enough to make it a double. Now we're at, when you're at 14 away, it becomes a pass. So that's the trailer score. So you see what happens if you go, if you uh, decrease the score to make it 17 away or increase it to make it 14 away, you see it becomes a pass here. So this is the equity for no double and this is the equity for double take. So if the equity for double take is greater than one, then it's a pass. And if the equity for no double is greater than one, then it's too good to redouble. And now if you change the leader score, so again, this is where Steve was 13 away, Wilcox was 16 away. If you change the 13 away score to 12 away or 14, 15, 16 away, you'll see the same kinds of changes. Um, now at when uh, he's at 16 away, you see that doubled gammon on an eight cube wins him the match with perfect efficiency. So it becomes too good to double. And at 15 away, it's almost the same thing. It becomes a pass. At 14 away, he doesn't have as much overage, only two points of overage. So it becomes a double pass. And then at 12 away, it becomes a no, it's still, it's an even bigger no double. There are other things you want to think about is when he wins a single game, what he what score he gets to. Um, so you want to see what if it's going to be a good score he's going to be at an even score or and so forth. For example, at twelve away, if he wins a double gammon on four, he gets to four away, which is a very valuable score. So that's part of the reason why he wants to play on um, at this. And, and not redouble. He wants to wait for a better opportunity. Anyway, the score um, based uh, adjustments are very complicated in a match. So this is actually what Wilcox said in a comment on Facebook. The position is quite bad, but the score affects so much and the turnarounds can be so violent. That's what I was talking about. At 16 away, you re reship the cube to 16 and you win perfectly with a single game. I took quickly since I had already factored the score variables and the take felt clear enough that I didn't feel like wasting more time. If you feel that way, then grab it with confidence. It might shake some opponent's nerves extra if the game goes well for you. They can wonder correctly or not if they did the wrong thing. Steve's not going to think that way. He's, he's a very strong player, um, but that is that is definitely true. And that's it for this position analysis. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, specifically about how you make score-based adjustments and what you'd like to see in future videos. And I'll work on that. Thank you again to Mark Olson, Bill Riles, Backgammon Galaxy, and Ace Point Backgammon for allowing me to use this position in this video. And I'll see you in the next video.